Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson, we're going to give you a quick introduction to the Angular Material data table. The data table is a very powerful Angular Material component that is ideal for displaying to the user tabulated data. We are going to be adding all sorts of commonly needed features such as loading indicator, pagination sorting and cover many advanced use cases, but right now we want to start at the beginning and cover the basics of how to display data using the material data table. So for that we are going to be using in this lesson this component that we see here in our sample application, the course component under the course app folder. So let's have a quick look at this component. As we can see, we are only displaying here a course description and a course thumbnail. Let's also have a look at the component at runtime by switching here to a larger window. So starting here with the home screen, you can click in any of the courses in the list here on the view course button and you are going to reach the course component. So as we can see, this is a very simple component that displays the thumbnail of the course and the course title. So below it, we are going to be adding in this lesson a material data table containing the list of lessons of the course. Later on, we're going to be adding sorting, pagination, a loading indicator, etc. and cover other advanced use cases. Right now, let's just display the data to the user on the screen. Let's have a look at the component code that goes along here with the course component template. So if you have a look at it, this is just the skeleton of the component. The data table is not initialized yet. We can see that the component is integrated with the router and it grabs the currently active course here from the router snapshot. It then sets it to this course member variable that is then going to be used here on the template. We also have here collapsed a list of lessons. So this is just some hard-coded data that I'm going to be using in order to quickly display some data to the user. Later on in the course, we're going to be doing a backend call and fetching the data that way using pagination. So right now, let's switch back here to our component and start implementing our data table. So here below this section, the course section, let's add here a new HTML table and we are going to turn this into an Angular Material Data Table simply by using the Mat Table directive. Let's add it a couple of styles that we have previously prepared. We are going to add it to the Lessons Table and we are going to add to the table a noticeable drop shadow. So I'm going to use here the standard CSS class that comes with Angular Material and let's give it a shadow of size 8 which is a nice noticeable backdrop shadow. Now we need to pass to this data table some data. So you can create a custom data source, but the simplest way of passing data is to simply provide here to data source an array containing your data directly. This is a very convenient feature that allows you to pass data to your material data tables without having to create a separate data source and create some observables that then get fed here to the data table. This simplified way of using the material data table should be the one preferred in most projects. So that's what we're going to be showing here in this lesson. So here to the data source, we simply have to pass in an array containing the data to be displayed. In this case, we're going to be using the lessons array directly. Next, we need to define here the look and feel of each table column and of each table cell. So for that, we are going to be needing here in our component the list of columns that we want to display. Let's create here a new member variable that we're going to be calling displayed columns. So this is going to be simply an array of strings and each of the strings is going to be the name of a column. The order of the array is important. This is going to be the order of the columns displayed in the data table. So let's start here by adding a sequential number field that is going to contain the index of the lesson inside a given course, starting at 1, 2, 3, etc. Next, we're going to give here a title to the course lesson. And last, we're going to be adding here a duration column. With the displayed columns array in place, we can now display each column separately. So let's go ahead and let's configure each column inside an ng container. Inside this ng container, we're going to be providing the template for two parts of the table. 
we're going to be defining the template associated to the header of this column and we're also going to provide a template associated to the table cell of this column. So let's mark this container using the mat colon definition directive. This directive is going to tell the enclosing Angular material table that this container contains the definitions for a particular column. So let's add here the sequential number column and inside it we're going to define the two templates. So one template is going to be for the table header Let's identify this as the template linked to the table header using the mat header cell directive. And let's add here some text for this header. So this could be a title. We could add here any Angular Material widget that we would like to add to the table header. In this case, I'm simply going to add the hash comment just to say that this is a sequential number. This mat header cell directive is going to add some important CSS columns here to the table header, but now we need to grab the template here of this table header and we need to make it instantiatable by the material data table. So this template here is going to be instantiated in a particular place in the Angular material table inner template. So we need to identify that this is the template of a header cell by applying here the mat header cell definition directive. So this is very important and a little bit confusing. You always need to apply two different directives to each template element. So mat header cell is going to apply the correct CSS styles and this is going to mark the template as instantiatable by the enclosing Angular material table. Let's give you here a second example. So here for the sequential number column, we have created here the definition of the header. Let's now create the definition of the data cell itself. So we need to apply here the material cell directive that is going to have a similar role here to mat header cell. This is going to apply the correct styles here to our table cell. And now we need to identify this template as instantiatable by the data table by applying here the structural directive mat cell def. And now here we would like to provide the sequential number of our lesson. So let's imagine that we have here somehow a lesson object corresponding to the lesson of each table row and we want to display here the sequential number. Now how do we have access here to this lesson object of the current row that we are displaying to the user? We can have access to it here via the mat cell def structural directive. So using here the let syntax we are going to access here the lesson object that we can name however we want. This is going to correspond here to the data row that we are displaying to the user. So in the case of our table, this is going to correspond to one of the lessons here in our lesson array and every lesson will have a sequential number property. So that's what we are displaying here. Again, if we forget to add here mat cell def and mat cell, if we forget one of the two, then the template will not work correctly. It won't be displayed correctly. The same thing here for table headers. You always need to provide these two directives separately. Okay, so let's continue the implementation of our table. Let's now add here a second column. So to make it simpler, I'm going to copy paste here the definition here of the first column. Let's add here the name of the second column. So this is the second column here in our array. We can see it here and notice that what defines the actual order of the columns is the order of the array and not the order that you see here in the template definition of the course component. So I could switch around the order of these column definitions and that would not change the order of the columns displayed on the running example. So now this is for the description. So we're going to add here the correct header for this column. Let's add here just the text description and let's display here the correct data to the user. So this time around we want to access the description property. Notice that here inside the table header or inside the data cell content we can add any Angular directives that we need. This does not have to be plain text only. We can have any widgets that we need to display to the user the information correctly, such as, for example, a country flag to indicate a given country, etc. 
Let's now create here the definition for our last column of the table. So I'm going to take this one as a starting point. Let's switch here the name of the column. This is going to be the duration column. Let's switch here the title of the column header and let's display here to the user the duration of the lesson. Let's add here a specific CSS class here to this table cell. We're going to add here the duration cell CSS class. And with this, we now have defined here the free templates for our free columns, but this is not sufficient yet to display the table to the user. So we also need to provide here, besides the headers and the cells, we need to provide a template for the table row itself. And we can provide this template by defining here a table row and applying it the material row directive. So again, this is going to apply certain styles to the table row. But if you want to define this as a template, you need a separate structural directive called mat row def. And again, you need to always provide the two separate directives. Otherwise, this won't work. If you are wondering why is this template needed, well, this is useful, for example, for detecting clicks on a given row and reacting to those events. So here to the material row definition directive, we need to pass in the list of displayed columns. So first we're going to be applying here the let syntax that is going to allow us to access the lesson of the current row in our data table. This is useful, for example, for implementing a click handler. And next we can provide here some configuration properties, one of them being the columns of the data table. So let's pass in here our displayed columns array. And now the last thing that we need to add is a template for the row of our header. So we are going to need here a second table row HTML element. And to it, this time around, we are going to be applying the mat header row directive. This template, as usual, also needs a separate structural directive called mat header row definition. And to this directive, we're going to be passing the list of columns of our table, in this case, the displayed columns array. And with this, we have finished the implementation of our data table. So as you can see inside the table, we're going to be defining a series of templates that the table is then going to be using internally. And we always need to apply the correct CSS classes to the template using mat cell, mat header cell, etc. And then we always need to apply a second directive, which is a structural directive that is going to identify this as a given type of template. Let's then have a look at this table in action. I'm going to switch here to a larger window and let's click here on view course. And as we can see, we have here our table nicely displayed to the user. And if you notice there is even some styling already applied to it. So there is some custom styling applied here for the different columns. We can see here that this column has here a black right border. We can see that this column is in italic, etc. So how did we do this? That's what we're going to learn in our next lesson. We're going to learn how to easily style Angular Material data tables.